In August of 1945, a new College of Engineering opened at UCLA with 379 students. The nucleus of the facility was built under founding Dean L.M.K. Belter. Dean Belter, great fellow and very good to those of us who are veterans, and I think he was proud that we were all together in his, in his school. Along about 1947, 48, they cleared some land right on Westwood Boulevard, where there was a mechanics art building in those days. And they had a machine shop there that served as mostly the, the school as well. There were no parking garages. There was no Walter Hall. There was just engineering one. I spent four years in that building in three summers. Uh, it was a great time. When I got to UCLA, I felt uh, an amazing feeling. I felt that I had come to a place that, that was really connected to the world. I came to UCLA as a graduate student in 1967. This was during the run-up of the Apollo program. President Kennedy had uh, made his big announcement uh, about going to the moon and the process was in rapid uh, escalation at the time. The first class was kind of a mixed bag. The majority of us were veterans and we were of different ages. I don't remember ever thinking I'm in the first class. I really never thought that. I, I really felt, gee, I, I like the others. I, I would like to finish and get out and work. Late 60s, for example, there was this big discussion about the opportunities for new technology. You had the space program. You had people who were doing things for the first time that nobody else believed like a few years before that it could be done. And it just attracted my imagination, and I thought that I wanted to do that. I was the first PhD in biomedical engineering program. So back then, it's not a department yet, it's a program. So for me, it's a wonderful experience, and it totally changed my life. Right here in Los Angeles, right near where we lived, uh, was UCLA, uh, which was a world-class uh, research university. Dean Belter had a dream of a, of a design of the way he thought undergraduates should be taught. And he thought they should be taught the core sciences. In most engineering schools, the tradition was you immediately went in and focused in on a discipline of engineering, like electrical or mechanical or industrial or civil. At UCLA, the view was that the world was going to be changing over time. And while you needed a number of specific backgrounding uh, subjects, uh, it was hard to predict exactly where your skills would, would be needed in the future. Many schools just had engineering as the major. So the benefit of that, of course, is that I was able to take courses, not only was able to, I was forced to take courses, which I'm glad I was, in many other disciplines other than electrical engineering. For me, I'm a big picture person, and I don't like to necessarily pick one thing to focus on. I like to get the entire breadth of the subject, and the engineering school at UCLA provided me with that breadth. UCLA has, um, I think, evolved um, um, perhaps faster than most institutions in terms of carrying forward this interdisciplinary approach to engineering education, and, and I value that. The school has made tremendous progress in terms of its own quality, and in terms of its own standing nationally, and in terms of the desire to really make a big difference as an engineering school. It was quite an experience to, uh, to interface with some of the most uh, brilliant faculty member, members on the planet. There's a nurturing atmosphere in the engineering department, which has been present and I think continues to this day. Public universities have a responsibility for certainly making certain that there are no barriers to the, the admittance and education of, of students of all backgrounds. When I came to UCLA in 79, we were very few female students, very few. In my own area, maybe we were two, myself and another student from Serbia at the time. There were probably about 10% women 
in the engineering school. So one thing I was really impressed by was all of the outreach programs that we did um, to try to encourage women to join the engineering field in general. Engineering education has had to adjust. Uh, sometimes there's been a difficult process, but more and more schools are beginning to understand the importance of doing that. The only reason anything happens, the only reason things change, is because somebody's not satisfied. And so I want to raise a crop of somewhat discontented students who want to go out and change things. Otherwise, nothing happens. Do you want to see the school and its students, its graduates, and its faculty have an impact on society, a positive impact by creating new companies, creating new ideas, and being known as that center of engineering wisdom? Today, UCLA Engineering, the birthplace of the Internet, continues its tradition of excellence and innovation. Research leads to innovation. Innovation leads to new technologies. New technologies lead to new businesses. New businesses lead to new wealth. New wealth leads to improved standard of living in society. UCLA engineers are working on technologies that will impact society in many areas critical to the 21st century. They are designing the next generation internet, the smart grid, systems and designs for more powerful electronics. A lot of the innovation comes from fundamental research and mostly these fundamental research comes from academic institution. The students there can come up with great ideas that maybe corporations hadn't thought of and bring a lot of value to these corporations. The university has the tools, the brains, and the time and ability to solve the problem. Home of the reverse osmosis membrane, they are continuing to make drinking water with smaller, faster desalination and filtration systems, and protecting our physical and digital infrastructure. Using cell phones, wireless networks, and new materials, they are facilitating offering of healthcare in more personalized ways, and making it much more accessible and cost-effective. They are working toward a sustainable future by creating technologies in new energy such as wind, solar, biofuels, and energy storage. The school is home to several multi-million dollar research centers in wireless sensor networks, nanoelectronics, nanomedicine, renewable energy, customized computing, and the smart grid, all funded by federal and private agencies. And they are educating the next generation of engineers. The opportunity to have gone to UCLA, for me, from where I came from, from my background, uh, from my experience growing up in neighborhoods in LA, uh, was really the defining change. One student can make a difference, and a group of students can make an even bigger difference. You should accept the idea that if you want to have a big impact, you have to persuade a lot of people that they want to do that too. To be able to connect what students learn with the big social problems and try to show the relevance and the connection and how students can really use what they learn to solve these important problems. Then you'll have that enthusiasm to go further and continue your, your life in something that you really enjoy. UCLA can continue to emerge as truly one of the great universities in this country. The UCLA Henry Samueli School of Engineering and Applied Science, driving innovation.